Hello there everyone, I'm the Almighty Zentaco, and today we're going to learn how to make some game art in Inkscape. Uh, we're going to start with something fairly easy, we're going to do a crate, like a shipping crate. So go ahead and load up Inkscape now. First thing we're going to do is create a box, we're going to do that, uh, make a perfect box by holding control and dragging. This will make sure that our box is um, perfectly square. Alright, we need to make this box filled. So I'm going to press F1 to make sure it's selected, and I'm going to pick a color from the bottom. Clicking with the left mouse button, it gives me a fill color. We're going to go with that. Alright, um, I'm just going to select the box, press Control D. Holding in Control and Shift, I'm going to drag inward. This is going to create a second box and scale it down, uh, perfectly centered and perfectly square. About there is fine. So now we need some diagonal pieces, so we're going to go over to the draw bezier curves. I'm going to click on the corner, and then I'm going to drag to this corner, double click. So as you see, we now have uh, a crease. I don't want this to be too big though, I'm going to shrink it down by using the middle mouse button on the stroke. I'm going to use the roll bar. There we go. And we're going to do this, we're going to repeat this for all four corners. Doesn't have to be perfect, people won't really notice. Just, uh, we're just trying to get some lines in here. Okay, we want this all to move together, so we want to select everything, and then hold in Control and press G. This will make it one object. Uh, it's a little light, so I'm going to change the color. There we go. Okay, <clears throat> so now we need some slats. So we're going to do that... Um, same way, we're just going to use uh, the line tool, the bezier. Now, I don't want the, the line to be um, anything but perfectly 90 degrees. So if I hold in control, that'll do a snap, and it'll it'll let me pick uh, pre-defined angles. So this way we can keep it perfectly straight. So we're going we're gonna to make a bunch of slats doing it, just like this. And yes, I'm aware that these are slightly irregularly sized, but that's fine. Okay, let's group all this together. Now, um, we need to add... Hmm, I think we need at least one more diagonal on the board. At least a diagonal board, I think. That'll probably be necessary. So, how are we going to do this? We will use the Bezier tool. We are going to start at an angle there like so. We're still holding in control so we can keep it uh, on a predefined angle. And we want to reconnect exactly where that first point was so it'll make an object. <clears throat> Alright, so again we need to make this one big object so select everything and control G. Okay, um, now we're going to go ahead and add a bit of shadow where the shadow would be. We're going to use again the uh, control button. We're going to hold that in so that this is a straight line. And we're going to create an object. Now we are going to change the fill color to black. So click on black. Now as you see, that's really dark, so we want to make this semi-transparent. We're going to add transparency to this. So go to Fill and Stroke, and under Opacity, select it, and bring it down. Maybe something like 30. So that creates a pretty decent shadow effect. We're going to go ahead and create another shadow. Okay, that looks fairly good. Gonna make this one object. <clears throat> now we just need to add some texture. So I'm gonna go ahead and make some irregular sort of cuts and shapes uh, that are gonna have some opacity. And that should uh, create a nice sort of just textured look. I'm going to increase the opacity on this though because I want this to have a darker texture. So 
So I'm just going to go and add some cuts and irregular shapes to create some texture in this wood. Kind of make some, you know, make it look like knots and stuff. And since this is wood, it's cool if it's uh, kind of sharp. It doesn't have to be necessarily angular or anything. Okay, we could do this all day, but uh, that's good enough for now. We're going to grab everything. Control G. So now it's one big object. Okay, <clears throat> so um, we need some nails in the corner. So we're going to grab the circle tool. We're going to hold in Control and Shift and create a circle. Unfortunately, it still has the opacity, so we need to bring that back up. And uh, we're going to make this sort of silver. Let's take a look at this and see how it looks in the corner. Now that's way too silver. Let's go ahead and give it an outline with shift. And we're going to scale that down. That's way too big. So we need this to look a bit like a nail. So uh, the head of a nail or a screw. We'll make it a screw. So then we're going to grab the uh, Bezier tool and we're going to create just a little shape there. Going to bring the opacity down. And we need this to be centered, so we're gonna grab everything, go to align distribute, center on both the X and the Y, or on the vertical and the horizontal. Control G, now we have one object. Gonna scale it down a bit. Control D to make another one. Click on it, we're gonna spin it. We want all these to be slightly different. So just keep using Control D and spinning them to a random angle. I accidentally moved the center. That's uh, from the, the point at which it'll spin, so. Okay. We're gonna grab all these. We're gonna control D them. We're gonna drag them over here. And we're going to press V to flip them vertically. So now we can just grab them and align them like so. We'll control D again to get another group of them, bring them down. These will actually fit perfectly right on the left side. Okay, you see everything moving around because it's snapping, so we need to undo some of the snaps. Um, I'm actually not very good with these. I don't know which is which, so I'm just going to get rid of all of them. All right. Control-D for the final one. Press V to flip it again. And boom. Okay, so we got some nails. Let's grab everything. Control-G it. So now we are going to add just a tad more texture and we're going to do that the same way we did before But this time we're going to make sure that there is no opacity We want this to be completely black So go to fill and stroke make sure it's at 100% and we're just going to kind of cut out little shapes Just kind of nicks here and there We just want to make this wood look uh, distressed kind of torn up Okay, we're gonna grab everything and control G to make sure it's one big object. Um, okay, we're gonna add a sticker and then that should be everything. So we're going to drag it out like so. Gonna make it white. We don't want an outline, so we're gonna get rid of that with uh, shift and click on none. <clears throat> going to shrink this down a bit. All right, we're gonna add a filter to make this look a little more realistic. Go to filters. Um, we're gonna go to distort and roughen. There's a live preview we can select.
Doesn't seem to be working. <laughs> oh wait, there. All right, so that kind of gave us a nice little um, irregular shape for our sticker. <clears throat> We're going to put some text in here. Make sure I select black, and I'm going to write fragile. Now my text is way too spread out here, so we're gonna go to space between letters and we're gonna make that zero. That does not need to be like that. F1 to uh, select it, and we're gonna drag it down. Now I'm gonna change the, I'm actually gonna center it first, and then I'm gonna change the font. So I press, <coughs> select the uh, text, press F8 to bring up the font tool. All right, so I got a font in there that seems all right. Gonna make this one object. Now we can kind of drag this anywhere we want and uh, sort of, you know, we'll move it around. It doesn't need to be perfectly, anything that's, it would, it kind of takes away from it if it's perfectly uh, aligned. So let's spin it a bit. All right, we'll make this one grouping and um, that should just about do it. So that is how you make a a piece of game art for an Inkscape. This is just a simple crate. All right, guys, so that covers it. Thanks for watching. Um, please leave your comments down below uh, if you have any questions or comments. And uh, it would be awesome if you guys would all click on the description and join my Discord channel. It's a great place to learn game design and uh, have your questions answered. So as always, guys, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.